All right. Welcome, everybody. Um, I am Tanisia. I'm with Brick by Brick Real Estate, and we have Megan here with us. She's with Brick by Brick. And today we are going over CMAs. So hopefully my kids are down because that was the whole point <laughs> of doing this at 8.30 because I'm like, kids are down. But if you see like little people in the glass behind me, just message and I will yell at my husband to go take care of them. Happy COVID, right? I hear them running around upstairs. So I'm like, oh, great. Um, so today we're going over CMAs. Um, Megan has been incredible. She's been working really hard with everyone at Independence at the Point. She's been doing free CMAs over the past two weeks. Um, and we've been doing a special focus on finished basements versus unfinished basements. And we've had a ton of responses. And so today we're gonna be going over how to read the CMA. And so that way, when you're reviewing your own or if you're interested in um, getting one, you can actually see what it looks like. And we're gonna dive in. Megan, do you have anything before I, we jump in? Yes, yeah, so I think a good starting place for us is just kind of what is a CMA? Like, what is it that we're about to look at for anyone that's not familiar with what that is? That is a good question. So before I, actually, I'll go ahead and share my screen. Let me pull up a CMA. So a CMA stands for Comparative Market Analysis. And what that is, is it's going to take um, someone's house and, they're, and it's going to compare to other homes that are either active, that are sold, that are under contract um, and see kind of comparing, looking in a rear view mirror of what's happened in the past to see what their home value is right now. So it's kind of similar to um, an appraisal, but it's done by a real estate agent. So it's not an appraisal in the sense of appraiser will come in and appraise your home and tell you how much it's worth. A CMA is a comparative market analysis to do an estimate of that same worth. So um, they don't replace each other, but they are, it is like a good test in the sense of if you're looking to sell, your agent should be doing CMA and they're going to be the ones who are going to help you fine tune what that sell price is. Do you sure. that answers it well? Sorry, what was that? Does that answer what the CMA is? Yes, definitely. That was a very good description. So we're just going to be looking at like, if you're interested in all and what your home could sell for, or even what homes are going for in the neighborhood, this is a really good sneak peek into that. Definitely. So Megan's going to kind of play the role of our homeowner <laughs> and that way she can kind of ask questions. And this is exactly what our CMA looks like. So it's going to have the address, who it's prepared by, the date, and it's going to jump right into, you'll see at the top, it says active properties. So I'm just going to start at page one and go all the way through the same as I would if someone had asked me to do a CMA for them. Um, every CMA is different. So I want to tell you kind of the background of what homes we're looking at. So we want to look at homes that are most active activity in the sense of these are homes that have either sold, they're active on the market right now within the past three to six months, ideally three. And in this market with um, how crazy it is in Utah, I'm really looking at the past 30 days because things have changed so drastically that six months ago, it's not really relevant. Um, so as accurate as possible, as far as timeline goes, which is most recent as we can get, we're also looking at homes that are within 500 square feet of each other. So they're similar in size. Um, similar in lot size and they're within a mile radius of the target home. So if you're looking at your neighborhood and if you were to go across a main highway, that's a different neighborhood. That's almost a different market. So we want to make sure that we're looking at where you are around your house. So in here, I'm going to show you what those different markets look like. Um, on this one, we'll have a focus on whether someone's basement is finished versus unfinished and what that does for value. Um, so jumping in, this is active property. So you'll notice the top, it's going to define what type of house we're looking at. So with this being active, this means it's not under contract and it's currently active and for sale. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And so this information is something that only you as a realtor can pull, correct? So there's a little bit of both. Um, because Utah is a private state, any data that is sold is not available to the public. So when we come further down onto the sold, you would not be able to look up this information, but I as an agent would be able to pull it for you, put it into a CMA document and send it over so you do have access to it. 
Um, active listings you do, you can go onto the MLS and you can see what those active listings are, but there are agent remarks and certain um, things that are limited to what I can see versus what you can see. So it's always a good idea if you're looking to get the most accurate information to have a real estate agent who has access to all of it to be able to pull the numbers and information for you. Okay, perfect. Let's keep looking. All right. So this top part, I'm just going to point out specific things that we look at through a CMA. And Megan, if anyone hops on chat, make sure to relay questions on to me because I'm not really like switching right now. For sure. I'll be looking out. All right. Perfect. So um, CDOM or DON means days on market. So this house was listed um, and it's been on the market for seven days. And so whenever we get to sold information, so if I scroll down here, you're going to notice the bar is going to change on the top. So all of these are active. And then now you'll see this bar change and these are under contract. And so on these ones, they've been under contract for four days. Um, I want to go to one that says sold and you'll notice that information, the layout is the same. Um, so for example, this one sold and you see CTDOM days on market, these, um, different numbers are changing. So this is telling me that it was on the market for six days when it went under contract. Um, it was listed at 424, but it actually sold at 420. So they were willing to go down about $5,000 in order to sell this home. I'm also interested in concessions. Concessions is if the seller is willing to pay closing costs. So in this case, there were zero concessions. So whenever I'm looking at these information, this information here, because this property is sold, I can analyze all data points. On ones that are either active or under contract, they don't have a sold date. So you'll see here we have the list price, but we don't know what it's actually selling for. Just because it's listed at this price doesn't mean that that's what it's going to sell for. And so if you're thinking, okay, what is my house going to be worth right now? Looking at these under contract one, it says a status here are going to be incredible comps for you because by the time you sell your home, more than likely these are going to be closed and they're going to be comps that are going to be used with your appraisal or your CMA. Does that make sense? Yeah. So one question I do have is generally how long does it take for a home to go from under contract to sold? That's a really good question. Um, so it depends on the terms. So as a seller, you get to decide when you want to sell your house. As a buyer, you get to decide kind of you have your own timetables. And so depending on what that looks like when those unions combined is going to dictate the timeline. A standard quote unquote, you know, timeline in general is about 30 days. Um, the reason why it takes so long is because you have sellers disclosures where the sellers disclosing everything about the property. You have um, due diligence where the home new prospective homeowners are doing their own home inspections to check everything out. You have financing and appraisal. The house has to get appraised and you're probably going to want to make sure it's close to what you're paying. And then you have settlement and financing. So like paying for all of those things. So it takes about a month, but if I'm doing a cash deal, I could close within, you know, two weeks if I only needed appraisal, or if I don't want an appraisal, I can close in three days. So it really depends on the buyer and the seller on what their goals are and their timelines, but standard is 30 days. Okay, perfect. That's good to know. Definitely. So with this one being an active property right now, it's on market for seven days. So if I were to come back here tomorrow, this number is going to say eight. But if I come down and I look at one that's under contract, one of those numbers is going to stop because that means it's under contract. So for this one here, you'll see 17 means it's still counting. So if I come back here tomorrow, this is going to be 18. Um, but you'll notice here is still four. And that's because it only was on the market for four days before it went under contract. So this is a really good number to compare. If we're looking at right now, this one went under contract in four days. This one went under contract, um, is still active and it's been active for 20 days, right? Whereas this one's been active for 26. So in our market right now, if we're looking at the ones, so these ones here are active. If we shift over to 
ones that have sold, this was on the market for six days before it was under contract. This was three days. This one here was two days. So you're noticing that these houses were under contract really quickly. And so when you shift gears to ones that are on, on the market for 30 days, it's going to be a matter of, okay, what are they priced at? Are they priced at a price mark of this house? If they are, what does the inside look like? Is it, you know, what are the factors that are kind of playing into why it's taking so long to get under contract or why did it get under contract so quickly? So if you're looking to sell your house, these are great indicators to be able to pinpoint other experiences of homes that are very similar to yours to kind of guess what your experience is going to be like. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And right now, as I've been doing these CMAs, I'm noticing houses are going super fast. It's very uncommon for something to stay on the market for longer than a week right now. It's true. And if I'm looking at a house that went under contract in two or three days, and if I come up on here and the concessions is zero and they're getting above asking price, then in my mind, what that tells me is more than likely there was probably a bidding more, which means there were multiple offers on the table. So if I have a seller who's looking to sell, um, I'll actually go through and I'll call those agents who are under contract and ask them what their experience is to verify. But just from looking at the numbers, I could very comfortably be able to say, hey, if we list your house at this price, we need to anticipate multiple offers, you know, if we want to do a highest and best and talk about what that looks like. Okay, that's really good information. Um, so kind of just skipping down to reading the rest of this. Um, this is the house. So these are your square footage. You'll notice there's B for basement, first floor, second floor, and it kind of goes up chronologically. So this is the square footage on each floor where the bedrooms, bathrooms, whether it's a full three quarter or half, um, where it's all located. It's also going to show you over here, the, how, the year the house was built. We wanna make sure all of the homes we're looking at are two story because our comparable home is a two story home. Um, if we can't find enough, we can use Ramblers, but again, we're trying to find the most similar, right? Right. In this case, we have 80% finished. So on these ones, the basements are finished. And on the next one, I'll show you where they're unfinished and how you can compare the difference. Um, but kind of going down, it's pretty self-explanatory. It will tell you yes or no if it has those things. It'll have the remarks as far as the, um, what the agent has listed, a description of the home. And as you can see, as I'm skimming through, all of them have the exact same layout. So kind of knowing where to pinpoint, we're specifically looking at the list price. We can look at the price per square foot, how that varies, and days on market are those top three um, boxes that we're paying really close attention to. Perfect. Okay. So coming down um, to under contract. So again, I had mentioned these ones are going to be the best comps for you because by the time you're looking to sell, these will be closed. And so on this one, it's under contract. It haven't, hasn't closed yet, but it's 17 days in. So going to that standard of 30 days, I would think, okay, in about 15 days, I'm going to come back and check on this. And more than likely, it's going to be closed by that point. Um, and then I'll be able to see, okay, did this list price go higher or lower? So just kind of time stamping this in our mind, this home is at 460, right? I come down, we're at 514. Again, we're under contract. This one went under contract nine days. So our, our numbers are all kind of staying consistent. This one here is sold. So on here, you'll know, I'm like pointing. Let me point with my mouse. <laughs> it was 25 days, six days on the market before under contract. They had to come down five grand, right? I come down on this one. This list price was 434, but they sold it for almost 10 grand higher. Zero concessions, three days on market. But again, my sold price, I'm at 445. And on here, I'm at 420. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm looking at this house. What looks different? Where, why are they, what's the discrepancy for, right? 
And in this report, as we continue to scroll down, it's going to have all the pictures of the interiors of this home. So that way we can see when this breakdown is going through, it's giving a value to bedrooms, bathrooms, and square footage, but it's not really taking account into the finishings of the home. And so that's where you, where you might see that discrepancy in pricing, where this home over here may have a lot of upgrades and the other one was more of like a builder standard. And that can really have a big potential on the value they're listing as well. Absolutely. And if you've noticed, you kind of go through and I'm like listing out numbers and you're like, oh crap, what was the one before? And it's kind of hard to like diagnose all of the numbers here on this page. And there's an analysis and a summary at the bottom that we'll get to um, that's going to compile everything in one. So really the purpose of this is to give you just an in-depth detailed rundown of each home that your CMA has. It's not necessarily using it to deep dive into the numbers. And then like Megan has mentioned, if we come down here, um, it's gonna show each of the homes and all of the interior pictures. And the reason why I like to show these is because someone will ask, okay, this house sold for $20,000 more than the other one, but they both were on the market for the same time. They both are almost identical, what's different? And you can come in and look at the finishes from one house to another and very easily see what those differences are, as well as see in comparison to your own house of like, okay, my house looks like this one. What was their experience like? Or I want to put in accent walls and do a backsplash, or what is it gonna do if I change the carpet? And you can go into see these homes and see if that matters or not, right? Um, and that's a question we get a lot too. When someone goes to sell their home, a lot of people have a laundry list and say, oh, my home's not ready to sell. I need new carpet. I need to remodel my kitchen. I need to remodel my bathroom. And in these situations, we can let you know whether it's really worth it to do those things in the sense of selling your home. Absolutely. And right now with COVID and all that we have going on in world chaos, building materials are extremely expensive right now. So if I have a client who's thinking, okay, should I finish my basement to sell it? My advice in this moment is absolutely not. You're going to spend more than you can probably sell it for, or at least break even. And if you're going to break even, what's the point of going through all of the hoops? If it's more of, Hey, I want to finish my basement and sell my home in five, you know, three years down the road. Absolutely. Do it now. Do it as soon as possible. So you can start enjoying it. But if you're doing it from an investment standpoint, Finishing in a whole entire basement is just not a good idea. Um, but on the flip side, if I have a client who wants to get more offers on the table or wants to get more foot traffic or catch people's eye, doing an accent wall or a backsplash or small things might not necessarily increase the value on an appraisal side, but it could catch the interest of more buyers. The more buyers I have, the more competition, the more competition I have the more they're gonna compete and that's gonna increase the price of my house. So there's going to be lots of factors that are gonna play into what's the best choice for you and your home. It's going to be unique to you, what your priorities are, what your budget is, um, but we're more than happy to kind of break down what makes the most sense on a number standpoint so you can decide, okay, this is what I wanna do and this is what makes the most sense for us. And with these CMAs, we're also creating a free MLS account for you to log into and view all this information as much as you want to. And you can favorite homes that are close to yours. If new ones pop up and you're like, Ooh, that one looks just like mine. You can shoot it straight over to us. And then that helps us continue to watch the value of your home. Definitely. I like skimming through this house. I'm like, this is my house. And I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> and I feel like all of our houses are like so similar. Um, <laughs> So this is the comparison report that I had mentioned before. So I want to deep dive into here a little bit. So you'll notice this column here on all of these pages is highlighted um, in a light blue. This is your house. So on each page, it's going to compare your house to these different comps. So there's comp one, two, and three on this page. And these are comparing your house to active properties. So right now, the list price is NA because we're not listing your house. We're just trying to figure out what the worth is. But these ones, since they are active properties, it's gonna show you what they're listed at. So like I mentioned before, it's kind of hard to scroll and keep track of all the numbers. This is where you can see on one line straight across what things look like. Um, so for this one, we have the list price. We don't have the sold price on here because again, these ones are active properties. 
but we can see the bedrooms. So all of these have four bedrooms, just like our house. They all have two bedrooms, but you'll notice this one has three. And so on this one, there's a $5,000 value that we are automatically calculating for the discrepancy in your house compared to the comp. So you'll notice a pattern here with different either negatives or additions to value. And it's gonna come all the way down to the bottom and average it out in the sense of, okay, um, an active adjusted total if you're wanting to sell your house as well as combining them. And so right now comparing you to these, you're looking at a potential price of 550 or 545 or 595. So you're thinking probably to yourself like, holy crap, that's a huge discrepancy. That's 50,000, $60,000, right? And so this is just one comparison and we're gonna continue to compile it. So if we come down, we're now going to look at our under contract values. So what you'll find usually always consistently is your active properties are active on the market right now. They haven't closed. So we don't know if those numbers are going to be higher or lower. Also, the market's always trending up. So since these are the most active and relevant to today's date, these typically are going to be a lot more higher. Whereas if you shift to under contract, your numbers are gonna drop a little bit lower and sold, typically they'll drop even more. Obviously, depending on what comps you're using is gonna dictate it, um, but let's just kind of see how it goes. So over here on averaging, this is ones that are under contract. We're at 487 and 495. So you can see it did come down a little bit. And on sold, we're looking at 447 and 495 again. So coming down to the last page, there's quite a bit of sold ones. You'll see the numbers fluctuate and here it's gonna bring them all together. Um, so before I kind of go and bring it all into one page, does this make sense, Megan? Do you have any questions about what this looks like? So you'll notice here on the ones that are sold, if I can get up to the top, sold here, you'll see this sold price. So you can very quickly analyze, okay, they listed for 450, sold for almost 20 grand more here sold for almost 10 grand more five grand more so these were on market for six days three days two days so you can see kind of a pattern and as they progress you can take those numbers compare it to the active and see what the difference has been between those two um do you feel like there's anything confusing about this when you're looking at it I think you've done a really good job at showing, you know, how this is all comparing everything apple to apple. The only question I have is these values where it's saying, you know, we're giving uh, $5,000 for a bathroom and $10,000 for a bedroom or whatever it is allowing. Mm -hmm. Are those numbers like just like an industry standard or kind of best guess? So it's an algorithm that is working behind the scenes. In my opinion, I feel like it's very conservative. Um, so typically when I'm looking at a number, I'm usually adding a couple thousand to it. Um, so what I always like to do is base things on a worst case scenario. So if I'm looking to list your home, we're talking about what your goals are, right? And so we have potential A, B, and C of what that could possibly be. And I'm always banking on the C option of, okay, if everything falls apart, if nothing goes our way, what's the worst case scenario? Does it still make sense? Do we still wanna move forward? Does that still get us a home run to what our future plans are? So in these numbers, just keep in the back of your mind that they are conservative. Um, if you want to pinpoint exactly what the discrepancy is, it's just going to depend on the house and the comps. And that's a conversation that we would be able to have to define exactly what that would be for you. Perfect. So these numbers aren't are not this is the value. It's just a good idea of what's going on surrounding your area. Yep. Good question. Perfect. Okay. Ready to move on to the crazy graphs. Yes. Okay. So here we are. Um, so this is going to show you a max, a mean, and a minimum, just as far as taking all the information so you can easily see where things are falling. So these are all of our active properties. And you'll notice again, it's the highest here, our under contract and sold. So our sold actually has a good spread. It kind of is bringing both of these two worlds together. So this is gonna be a good analysis to look at because it's gonna have all of our information and it's pretty even on where it hits between the two. 
Um, so if I look at my active listings, this is the lowest price that an active listing has that are on our comp sheet. This is the highest price. Um, this is the average and then the average price per square foot. So if you're thinking, okay, if I want to pull all the average and then multiply it out, that will tell you, okay, my house has this many square foot. This could be a potential list price or just looking at the individual listings on their own. So at the end of each, it's going to take our active under contract and sold average them all out. And that's these bottom numbers here. So again, we still have a wide range, um, but we can definitely narrow into an average on what this looks like, accumulating all of them together. Okay, perfect. And then if we come down, it's gonna do the same thing. These are active. It's following the same as far as list price, original price, sold we don't have. It's just kind of giving you a snapshot of all that information. It's gonna do the same thing for our sold properties. And then again, it's gonna do a map view at the very bottom. So here I had mentioned before that we wanna stay within our area. So on this example, we have this pocket of homes and these pocket of homes. So with our house being over here, any of these homes, they might be a good reference point to kind of view and see what their experiences are. But as far as price point and numbers, we're gonna be looking right here. So it's nice to be able to have like a big picture view but it's also good to be able to hone in on your community on both sides. So here it's gonna show you all the comps, where they're located. The color is gonna kind of dictate whether they're under contract, whether they're active um, and all of that. And then it'll kind of give you a snapshot of each of those homes um, kind of on a bird's eye view. And that's the whole thing. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Not as scary as it looks, right? No, and I would say that this CMA is probably more intimidating or scary than other ones that I've seen. And the reason why I say that is sometimes it's easier to cherry pick and say, okay, these three homes are, are it. And the reason why I don't like to narrow it down, I'm trying to find as many data points as possible. I am trying to find the most that I can that make sense within your comp because that gives me more data points. It gives me more experiences. It allows me to get an average that I'm more confident in. Whereas if I pick cherry pick three that are perfect or that I think are right on, I'm missing out on data. And I just, from a math standpoint, I want to be able to see as many as possible. And then from here, I can definitely pinpoint those and narrow in on them, but at least I have the full data spread of numbers to be able to make a good educated decision. And that's why the discrepancy is so big. If I were to rerun numbers with those top three, the discrepancy is probably gonna be like 30, 30, 20, maybe 20,000 at most. Um, and so that kind of gives you a little bit of background because again, we're looking at two different markets here and these numbers above um, are pulling all of that together in one. And so if I wanted to rerun this, what I would do is I would exclude these guys and I would hone in on here and kind of adjust. But for the purpose of like explaining and kind of showing you the different dynamic, I wanted to be able to have both. So you could, you know, fully experience all of the sides. Perfect. And so with these CMAs, we are really going after finding what is the difference here when we're finishing our basement or not? Um, you know, as we were talking about earlier, should I finish my basement just to sell my home? No, that's not a good idea right now. But where can that, sh where can we see that on this broken down? Definitely. So I have another MLS here and this was a, a different CMA that I had pulled. And I'm going to scroll down to the bottom here. So on here, it says finish basement and it's zero. So on this one, this home is a hundred percent. So this home has finished their basement. These ones have not. So you'll notice that there's this value. It's about 17, 18,000. So in my mind, I would just round up to 20 grand. So I would think, okay, if I can get a contractor to finish my basement for less than $20,000, whatever that discrepancy is, is going to be my profit margin. Right now with active um, um, estimates for basements, they're coming in. I mean, obviously it depends on your square footage but the lowest I've seen is 25 to 30. And that's like very competitive, super low. 
And so hitting this mark right now just doesn't make sense. But you'll notice here we're at a 519, whereas this is at a 510, 510, 529. So they're not getting as much of a benefit of that $20,000 mark over this listing. It really is 10. And that's because it's going to factor in other pieces as well. So you have to keep in mind that it's not just the basement that's going to make or break or be a determining factor. It's also going to be, you know, how big is your lot size? Um, what is your total square footage overall? Uh, do you have, um, it's kind of pulling, let's see, what are the other most common ones? Um, these are the so kind the of right here is very, very similar. And it, it's only doing that list price at like $9,000 difference. And so if the only difference was in these two homes was having a finished basement or not, you would only be getting a $9,000 upgrade for having finished your basement. Definitely. And if I had finished my basement four years ago, that's definitely worth it to me, right? Because the amount that I had paid then versus now the market's going up. So with time, it's going to be able to be a, a good investment. It's going to make sense. Like for me, we built our house. We intentionally built it with an unfinished basement because we knew we could finish it cheaper than what the builder could do. And we immediately did it because we're like, we want to start enjoying it now. So if you're in your home that you love and you plan on being there and you want to expand, finish your basement, like start enjoying it, use your space. But if you know that this isn't your forever home and you're looking to sell, if it's within the near future, especially right now with COVID and how much building prices are up in general with construction material, it just doesn't make sense. So I would say, hold off. But again, I always remind my clients that, you know, this is your choice. We're going to support you in whatever you choose. We're just going to give you the information and then you get to decide which makes the most sense to you because maybe you have priorities that are higher that are going to shift things that we're not, that aren't going to make sense on paper, but to us and in our relationship and in talking, it's the best thing for us to do. Right. And a lot of people I've also seen are finishing their basements to rent it out. Um, that's a really smart way to recoup the cost of finishing that basement and a really good way to kind of offset those costs right now. Absolutely. No, that's a really good point too. If you have an investment opportunity where you can offset your costs going in, then yes, you can then say, okay, it's going to cost me 30,000 to finish my basement but I can rent it for almost what my mortgage is because I bought X amount of time ago, whatever. And within five years, seven years, you can calculate how quickly you're going to be able to recoup that investment. And if you're planning on being in your house, then that makes sense. And when you go to resell, having like a basement apartment or having a kitchen, your value will be affected because obviously having more bathrooms or kitchens are going to increase the value. But overall, right now with the market that we're in, it's not going to impact it a ton. So if you're banking on having it all be in that basket, it's just, it's not likely. It's not impossible, but it's just not likely. I think that is a perfect way to leave this off tonight. Um, I hope that everyone has a really good understanding of what a CMA is, how to read it. Um, for those of you who sent us your information to get your own CMA, it should be in your email. So you can go back through and watch this and look at all these things side by side as we go through and explain it on your own CMA. And if you have any further questions, we're not going anywhere. Reach out, give us a call, shoot us a message here on Facebook. We're happy to help you walk through anything on here. Definitely. And in that email too, we take the entire CMA and we break it into pieces. So don't feel like you have to memorize everything. You can go to those shortcuts. We break down, okay, from this page to this page, this is what it's covering. This is what you need to know. And if you're in the boat where you're like, you know what, Tanisha, like this is just too much stuff. I don't need to know all the numbers. Just give me the top three. We can do that. That's not a problem. And that will look a lot um, condensed and simpler and less intimidating here. But if you want to know the numbers, if you want to be able to see the full spread, this is what it looks like. We're here. I live here. We're at Independence at the point. This is our home. So we know value. We know what's around and what's going on inside and out. So don't hesitate to ask. We're more than happy to help. And we're so excited you could join us. And if you guys have any recommendations on what you want to see next, definitely drop it in the comments of any questions you have. Um, some things we have going are talking about values of like adding a backsplash, accent walls, you know, putting different things in your home that 
you know, what are you going to recoup on those costs? And we love diving into this and getting your opinions on it. Absolutely. Um, also January 5th, we're doing forecasting for 2021. So join us live. We're going to be going over what the market looks like, what it's projected to do every quarter. We're doing a market analysis in general. So this is great for your up close and personal for your house, but that's going to be impacted by what the overall market is doing. So join us and get up to date on what that looks like. And we hope to see you soon. All right. Good night. Hey, we'll see you guys. Thank you.